Hello students, welcome you all to the top 50 rapid current affairs of each month. I hope your preparation is going really good and current affairs is now the bread and butter of your preparation for the prelims, CSE prelims 2024 examination. How we are going through this course and it would be helping definitely in your preparation with revision. A lot of feedbacks have come from the students that yes, they are revising this current affairs through the TFR series itself. The For new students, just I am telling that time is actually flying by and covering so many topics in that little span of time itself becomes a tedious task for the students and that too in an organized manner. The schedule for the class is, you know, 21st, 21st January we have covered economic development for the month of July, you know, 5-5 five, five days in 5 days, okay, you are watching one video with for one month and then in this 5 days, 21 to 25th January, we will be covering the month of July. 22nd Jan, Polity, Governance, International Relations. 23rd January, Environment. 24th January, Science and Technology. 25th January, it would be related to reports and indices, the important government schemes and defense. Art and culture, these things would be covered. Miscellaneous topics would be covered in detail. So, let's start. And about Science and Technology. Students understand in the science and technology how you can classify the science and technology. One aspect that is most important is the space, new emerging developments into the space where already SRO is doing so much. Second aspect is about biotechnology and biology, including the health dynamics of the biotechnology. New medicines are coming, UPSC has asked questions rela related to the prokaryotic and eukaryotic, what are the differences into the cell structure of that. Third is about information and communication technology. What are the advancements into these like 6G technology, metaverse, CBDC, okay, decentralized distributed technologies, blockchain technologies and fourth you can have as a miscellaneous or emerging technologies for example into the cell, lithium ion batteries, sodium ion batteries, hydrogen based economy, methanol based economy, transition, energy transition uh, which technologies are helping. So, right now we are starting with the space sector of it. Into the space also, you know, in the class, basically I talk about what are the preferential areas. Accordingly, we have different, different programs from the government, from the international relations. In the previous lecture, in the previous month, we have, uh, you know, covered the Artemis Accord that India also signed. India became 27th signatory to it. So, Artemis 2, planned by NASA planned by NASA, Artemis 2 will be launched soon in 2024, will be launched soon in 2024, which spacecraft it is using, Orion spacecraft, simple question, where it is going to land moon, into the space also, the most important three places are sun, Mars and moon, all the missions relate towards the sun, towards the Mars and towards the moon, you should be knowing, okay. What are the different lunar missions that we have planned yet? Luna, you know, Luna by Russia, okay. Basically, it was not successful, Luna 25 mission. Danuri mission by which country? South Korea in 2022, Danuri mission. Hakuto R mission, Japan. Japanese payload and UAE rover crash landed. UAE rover crash landed. Luna 25, Russia aimed at soft landing and sample gathering, but it also failed recently. Artemis 2. NASA USA in 2024 crewed mission to the moon, first crewed mission to the moon as a test flight, then Artemis 3 would be launched uh, for landing on the moon, Bereshit 2 of Israel, so match the column sometimes come in the examination that it is of which agency and on which Bereshit is related to Bereshit 2, the lunar mission of Israel 2025, they are planning to launch lunar landing with two lander and orbiter. So, you need to understand that whenever an important mission, so many missions are there sometimes, understand what the mission is, which agency has launched it and what is the purpose of that mission, basic purpose. So, missions, Euclid mission, Euclid mission is by European Space Agency. What is the purpose of this mission? To investigate cosmic mysteries of dark matter, dark energy. The option would be given that it is going to, you know, understand the gravitational waves or dark energy. Okay. 
तो इट विल प्रोवाइड अ थ्री डी मैप ऑफ द यूनिवर्स बाई ऑब्जर्विंग बिलियंस ऑफ गैलेक्सीज हाउ डज द एक्चुअल यू नो वी हैव टेरिटोरियल मैप पॉलिटिकल मैप ऑफ इंडिया नाउ विद द गूस एंड इंडूस वी आर यू नो हैविंग द मैप ऑफ द ओशन फ्लोर ऑल्सो here we want to have a map of the space cosmic world this is the purpose of euclid mission voyager 2 you know you can go on a voyage a journey journey to fly by the space you know it is launched by nasa to find and study the edge of our solar system at at the edge of where the kuiper belt ends and you will find you know icy clouds are there we call it oort cloud oort cloud oot cloud from there also some you know uh, things come omua mua basically entered from the oot cloud into our solar system so voyager 2 spacecraft is aimed to you know study the edge of our solar system and was the first human made object to fly past uranus in 1986 and neptune in 1989 making it the only spacecraft to have had a close look of the icy planets like oot cloud perseverance rover perseverance rover you know for nasa on mars mars part of nasa's mars exploration program it aims to look for signs of the past microbial life prepare for future human exploration collect samples of rocks and regoliths now mars missions you should be listing all these mars missions what is the mars mission from india mars orbiter mission mom mission or mangalyaan mission okay BP Colombo mission BP Colombo mission is for mercury actually mercury it is by european space agency and jaxa japan aerospace exploration agency and it is named on the name of a scientist BP Colombo basically who studied about mercury a lot and who has made significant contributions to the understanding of the mercury's orbit so Mer BP Colombo mission long march 10 rocket long march 10 rocket by which country by china china's Na china national space administration where lunar surface for manned moon landing missions on one hand because you know here you can see the conflict between china and us trade war currency war now what we are looking at space war you know they are not collaborating i am not saying exactly per se it is war right now but here also the strategic collaboration is not happening between uh, nasa and china on one hand you know orion is being sent to the uh, lunar surface by the artemis mission china is launching its own long march 10 rocket what are the other missions by the china on the moon chang e mission chang 6 mission chang 5 mission chang e 5 mission for manned moon landing mission remember this this is also important for the examination the rocket will be capable of ferrying crewed module crewed module means people will be sent to uh, to the moon along with a lunar lander to earth moon transfer orbit for this point so open kylin open kylin open kylin you, you here you need to understand in the information communication technology domain of the science and tech we need to understand that for example you know this is how your desktop looks like most of the time we ask the people which you know software you are using windows apple ios different softwares we are using as an interface to communicate with the desktop now certain softwares like microsoft us company to counter that china has come up with a software called as open kylin which is you know this is uh, open source software china's first open source desktop operating system you know that in china you know facebook is not working in china whatsapp is not working china has created firewalls different firewalls okay so reduce its dependent on the uh, dependence on us technology now what do we understand by the open source operating system students understand this like microsoft or apple ios different ios android ios are also coming so these ios are not open sourced only some softwares we can have open source open source means anyone can access those source and can make certain changes into it otherwise the source is logged and it is called as source code without the code you cannot access to the source the generally known operating systems like microsoft windows apple and mac os are closed os okay and they are complex programming that is called as source code is required 
in case of an open source operating system everyone can access and edit the source code this is about decentralizing and democratizing the technology on one hand this is good but problem with this is you know that special facilities uh, uh, an app developer will not be able to lease will will not have any incentive to give it to you for that matter now on this open source soft software it is the desktop software developed by china what we are doing right now you know ondc open network for digital commerce ondc that government of india ministry of commerce is making it is also based on open source software open source software so upsc can ask you the simple meaning of open source software what it is now we are moving from platform centric approach in the, in the e-commerce market towards the interoperable platform approach through the open source software ondc open network for digital commerce so this also you remember nano urea now nano urea how it is you know very much beneficial in comparison in comparison to normal urea urea based subsidy we understand nutrient based subsidy we understand okay first of all the biggest benefit of nano urea is less amount of less amount is required because of its size nano size less quantity is required there are less chances of its leaching out into the environment which is harming in, by creating eutrophication okay generally whenever a technology is infused the question asked by upsc in films 2018 at cng the statement that they have given one statement is that now the engines that would employ hydrogen based cng at cng will be cheaper it was very you know intuitive that whenever a new technology is introduced the product gets costly for example electric vehicles are costlier than the internal combustion engines the uh, in automobile sector but here students nano urea is comparatively cheaper because less quantity is required to be applied into the fields for the same production Nit nano nitrogen particles of the size 20 to 50 nanometer dispersed in the water okay we'll talk about it the urea absorption rate by the crops is 80 percent in case of nano urea whereas in traditional urea the absorption rate is 30 percent itself therefore quantity required is less nano urea is cost effective and demonstrated an increase in the crop yield therefore you need to understand this is a counterintuitive fact for the examination it is cost effective despite employing so much new technology it is produced by an energy efficient environment friendly production process with less carbon footprints easy to store in the you know you can get it in this kind of bottle itself and nano urea liquid plants at onla and Pulpur in Uttar Pradesh is going to be open first plant was where Kalol Gujarat Kalol Gujarat by IFCO IFCO at this point cell free dna cell free dna with the help of centrifuge and technology you can find that this is the you know uh, uh, blood sample where the plasma and cell free dna has been centrifuged and separated white blood cells and these are the red blood corpuscles rbcs okay uh, red blood cells are there so here in the plasma you get cell free dna what is the utility of cell free dna you know dna we know where the all the information related to the genetic information of a person is stored it helps in transcription translation process the dna now with the help of this dna we can understand analyze the disease pattern in the different pedigrees of the individuals across the different countries across the diversity horizontal and vertical diversities we can understand and to you know solve the problems in the fetus beforehand we can understand from this cell free dna this can be solved in a variety of scenarios some fragments of dna are released from their containers and are present outside the cell in body fluids certain dna's are present in with the dna you know three parent baby concept you understand in the mitochondrial dna is there okay applications one of the most widely used application cf dna you know in the examination it could be given to you what is cf dna it is cell free dna I understand when in the exam you get this question even that a DNA without cell can exist or not. This is a statement true or false. It becomes difficult sometimes to think it under the pressure. Yes, cell-free DNA exists. 
has been in screening fetuses for specific chromosomal abnormalities an application known as non invasive prenatal testing non invasive prenatal testing invasive you know with the surgeries we can understand that but by the collecting such samples we can understand the chromosomal abnormalities it is useful tool to understand human disease and to use the knowledge to improve diagnosis monitoring and prognosis by the doctors these small fragments of nucleic acids are widely known as cell free dnas it can work as a biomarker for neurological disorders neurological disorders like alzheimer's disease okay neurological tumors stroke traumatic brain injury and we can basically plan to resolve these issues current affairs crash course is live students you can definitely join the current affairs crash course in which i'll be taking you through the current affairs most important current affairs from the jan 2023 to the april 2024 not just that from the past 2 3 years what have been the most important news items that yet upsc has not asked because you know 2 3 years is not a big time for the upsc they say that often seen in news and they will ask the question so high yielding topics will be discussed subject wise classification into that classification sub classification is there so that proper understanding is there with the current affairs for you in a in a in a manner that uh, correlates with your static portion as well that will help you ace in the examination of prelims you can definitely join and offline courses are coming uh, including in delhi center thank you let's see tomorrow